Hello, my name is Dr. Karis Dillon, and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we looked at stereotypic movement disorder. In this video, we're going to look at tic disorder, so let's begin. I think the first thing we need to do is to define what a tic is. A tic is a sudden movement of the body that concerns a muscle group or a vocalization that happens quickly and does not have any type of rhythm to it. There are four types of tic disorders that start with the most severe, which is Tourette's disorder, then persistent chronic motor or vocal tic disorder, provisional tic disorder, and unspecified tic disorder. In order to be diagnosed with Tourette's disorder, the individual has to have both motor and vocal tics that present themselves at some time during the illness. Although they may not have both the vocal and motor tic concurrently at the same time. The tics may come and go in frequency, but will have persisted for more than a year, and they need to come before the age of 18 years old, and these tics cannot come as a result of using an illegal substance or medication or because of a mental condition. So that is Tourette's disorder. Persistent chronic motor or vocal tic disorder um, to be diagnosed with this, you have to have a single or multiple motor or vocal tics being present during the illness, but not both vocal and motor. The tics may come and go in frequency, but need to have persisted for more than a year. They have to come before the age of 18, and then this cannot be because of an illegal substance um, or another medical condition. With persistent chronic motor or vocational tic disorder, you want to specify whether it is a motor tic or vocal tic only. With provisional tic disorder, these come with single or multiple motor and or vocal tics. The tics have to be present for less than a year for when the first tic came about. The onset is before 18 years old and this cannot be because of a psychological or physiological condition because of a substance or other medical condition. And then criteria have never been met for Tourette's disorder or persistent chronic motor or vocal tic disorder. When you are diagnosing this, you'll want to note which criteria your tics fit into, how long the tics have been happening, what age they started at, and then the absence of any disease that could have caused them. So these disorders are hierarchical and once um, a higher diagnosis like Tourette's is made, that cannot be lowered. So it depends upon where the severity is, is where you'll diagnose that. Tics can include any muscle group or vocalization. Certain tics um, can be like a throat clearing or an eye blinking. Um, Generally, these are involuntary, um, but an individual can suppress them for a certain period of time. And this is certain individuals can do that. Certain other individuals cannot suppress them. Tics can be called simple or complex. So simple motor tics are very short, less than a second. They can include like a shoulder shrug or sniffing or grunting or eye blinking. And that is usually caused from the contraction within the diaphragm. Your complex motor tics often take seconds. And these can be anything from a bigger shoulder shrug or more of a spontaneous head turning. Complex tics look like they're more purposeful, but they're not. Um, they can even include like repeating the last sound of a word. They could be swear words that are unacceptable. And this is never on purpose. Tourette's disorder, which is the most severe, um, can impact anywhere from three to eight per out of 1,000 school children. It's much more prevalent in males than in females. The onset of tics occurs generally between the ages of four to six years old, and you'll see kind of a height of severity take place more when a child's like 10 to 12, when they have that onset of puberty. As children get older, they report their tics come with a sort of urge to 
go through or play through the tick. The tick may be repeated over until a person feels like they have accomplished what they needed to accomplish with the tick. Tick disorders tend to be very individualistic. So as one person might be able to hold back the symptoms of a tick, another person cannot. And again, the big thing I want to stress is that it may look purposeful, but it is not. Um, if they are truly, if they do truly have a tick disorder, whatever that tick is, they are not meaning to do that. So ticks can be worsened by anxiety, excitement, and exhaustion. If the person is calm or they're focused on another activity, you will see the tick kind of suppress itself. If the person hears a sound, a tick might come out with kind of a repetition of that sound as a tick. This can be perceived by others as being purposeful, but again, it's not. And if the condition of this tick disorder comes with ADHD or OCD or a host of other uh, comorbidities, this can make it a lot more difficult to live with these ticks alongside of the difficulties of those disorders. Ticks can cause social isolation from others, psychological distress, and a lower quality of life. Okay, well that is it for the video. Now, if you've been following my channel, you will have noted that we did get through all the neurodevelopmental disorders. These include intellectual disability, global developmental delay, language disorder, childhood onset fluency disorder, also known as stuttering, social pragmatic communication disorder, autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, specific learning disorder, developmental coordination disorder, stereotypic movement disorder, as well as tick disorders. Now this is a lot and I, I understand that it's a lot, but I think the neurodevelopmental disorders are sometimes some of the toughest because we don't always know as much about these disorders as some of the specialists do. So if you have missed these videos, please go back and check these out, especially if you're um, practicing or trying to learn these for a test. These videos will help you to understand the criteria and how these disorders are diagnosed. If you like this video concerning tick disorders, please click on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and share out this channel so that other people can have a chance to learn these as well. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your time in watching these and I will talk with you soon.